He's J.C. Treader. He's the NFL Players Association president, and he is the starting center for the Cleveland Browns. Let's get to the important stuff right away, J.C. Thanks for joining us. How much do you think the commissioner weighs? <laughs> You're going to start with the hard-hitting questions uh, yeah. Questions early. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm uh, in one of the uh, carnival uh, uh, positions of, of trying to guess birthday, uh, uh, astrological sign, and, and weight here. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say it's probably what, like 6'2"? So I'd give him about 220? 220. Okay. Looked like he lost a little weight during the pandemic, but you could bench the commissioner, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, that's all I wanted to know, JC. We appreciate you joining us here. Thanks for having me. Uh, by the way, I got one of the guys on my staff. He went to Dartmouth, and he Sorry knows. about that. Yeah, you went to Cornell. Uh, McLovin, you want a shot at JC here? No, I mean, it's just a shame he couldn't get into Dartmouth. I was curious, was he a, a, a hotel manager major or agriculture? Because I was an English literature major, right? Uh, industrial labor relations. <laughs> oh, forget it. <laughs> could, could, could you get into Dartmouth, though, JC? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Also, Dartmouth was your safe school. Yeah. Yeah, that was my fallback just in case things went really bad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, the Texans and Cowboys test positive, including Zeke Elliott yesterday. And it felt like the NFL, when we contacted them, they don't really have a plan in place if this happened during this season. What have you been told or what are you telling your players about the safe, you know, safety guidelines that you're going to have once the season starts. Yeah, I think that's that's why we've continued to work on it, and I think this is just a perfect example of you know bringing back to light that this is still going on, and the world has gone somewhat back to normal, and, and places are opening up, uh, but but this is still kind of out there, and uh, you know what, what we've been doing as a union is, is just continuing to grind away at protocols and rules and guidelines. Uh, that we need to put in place to make sure our players are as safe as possible when they go back. And uh, I think you see that, you know, football players are not immune to this virus uh, and, and we're not all in perfect health. I think people look at us like we're kind of robots or invincible, uh, but, but we have players in the league with underlying conditions that put them at higher risk uh, of some really negative results of this virus. And not only that, but they have family members who are immunocompromised or, or have underlying conditions that make them susceptible to this virus. So, uh, that all goes into play in trying to figure out the best way to keep everybody safe and healthy throughout this year. The Players Association comfortable giving up all this medical information? You know, if if you're, I, I'm assuming, you know, like the NBA players have to get up, give up this medical information. Are the NFL players, you're going to have to do the same thing? Yeah, we're looking through all that and kind of, you know, what are the ethics around all these issues? Uh, and we, we've got task forces looking into, you know, what needs to be shared, um, you know, what are the players' choices, uh, and just trying to figure out, you know, what what can we talk about, what can we share, uh, and figure out the best way. So we've had several task forces looking at a bunch of different uh, avenues of kind of return to play. Uh, we've got looking at risk mitigation, testing. So we've had that going on for the last two months now, uh, continuing to, to look at different things that we can do to keep people safe and, and trying to break it up into each avenue as we you know approach our normal start to a season. Do you think we're starting on time? That's a tough question. And I think it's tough because you see how, how quickly things can change. Uh, you kind of look, we're about, what, six weeks, month and a half uh, away from our normal training camp start date. And you look back to what things looked like a month and a half ago and then a month and a half before that. And you see how much how much different things look in just six weeks. So I think it's irresponsible to speak in any definites uh, that far in advance. I think we've continued to look in, in short, intermediate, like two week bursts. And, and we've got the virtual off season that we negotiated has been extended till June 26th. So our guys know what they need to do and, and what they're responsible for until then. Uh, some teams have begun closing down and, and ending their virtual program early. So guys have gone on to their break like they normally would. Uh, but but our guys know at least for the next two weeks what they can do. And, and then from there, we have to continue to work and continue to keep these guys prepared and, and safe. He's J.C. Treader. He's the NFL Players Association president and the Cleveland Browns Center. How much dialogue has uh, come up with uh, in the uh, Players Association about Colin Kaepernick? I, I think this whole... The, all the issues, and it's been going on for, for years now, uh, is, a, is a constant conversation. It's been going on in locker rooms and then at a union level. I mean, that's why 
when the NFL tried to unilaterally impose uh, new rules and guidelines, that's why we filed a grievance to, to fight that because we're not going to allow you know, people to infringe on our players' rights. So it's been something we continue to fight for. And, and Colin, I think, I think it should be clear to everybody by now, he's out of the league not because of a football issue yeah. uh, and not because he's not capable of playing football. Uh, so, you know, we hope and we've continued to push for him to be back and be brought back into the fold uh, and be, be signed by a team. Uh, and we hope that happens. But you also have these now your uh, quarterback, Baker Mayfield and J.J. Watt, Bill O'Brien of the Texans. They're saying they're going to take a knee. Can you I know it's fast forwarding into September, but what are the sidelines going to look? Like? What do you think the sidelines are going to look like? I don't know, but I, I think luckily this conversation has continued. And at least people are starting to understand that no one who was kneeling before was it about anything with the military. No one, no one said anything about that. Uh, it was always fairly clear when you asked them the question of why are you kneeling? They talked about the systemic racism, police brutality, uh, and racism in the country. And, that, and that's why they were bringing awareness. Uh, and, and I think people have started to understand that more and that's become a more widespread understanding. And you see the people now becoming more comfortable about talking to that issue. Uh, and, and I think it's great about guys raising awareness for issues they're passionate about. And, and that's something as players, it's promoted. We have a week every year for My Cause, My Cleats, where we go and get shoes and, and the, the media talks about all these stories and all these issues that we're passionate about and want to bring awareness to. Uh, and this is another issue guys want to bring awareness to, and it, and it shouldn't be, well, don't talk about that issue. No, this, if this is an issue guys are passionate about, Guy should be able to bring awareness to that issue. And I think it's Justin Jackson from the Broncos who came out and said, you know, we we wanted to raise awareness for this back with Kaepernick, and we've raised awareness. Maybe you don't need to try to do that with the anthem. That is there another way? Like, if you graduated from that to something else, uh, you know, for the lack of a better description here, for the entire NFL Players Association, is there another level to this because you got eyes on you. Kaepernick got eyes on him. Malcolm Jenkins, Eric Reed, some of these other players. Now, where do you go from here, I guess, would be my question for anybody involved in this. Yeah, I think that's those are conversations that are going on and trying to segue that awareness into action and into change. Uh, and that's kind of been the goal of, of raising the awareness, getting the eyes on it, and then segueing that uh, into tangible things that can make, make these issues better. Uh, and I think we're starting to see that the players coalition has been very active. And I think teams are starting to get behind that. Almost every team I've talked to, the players have said that they've had team meetings th throughout this offseason dedicated to these issues. We've had in Cleveland, we've had guest speakers come in uh, who are very involved in these issues to share their knowledge and their perspective. Uh, so, so I think people are starting to get more involved in, in not just raising the awareness, but affecting change in communities. Uh, and, and that's a great thing to see. His uh, initials, J.C., stand for just cash. Uh, J.C. Treader. Um, what if you said the if I didn't watch the Browns last year, and I said what happened? How would you describe what happened with the Browns last year? Yeah, I, I think we had a lot of a lot of different directions being pulled at, and I think what what's been nice with the addition of Coach Stefanski coming to the fold. Uh, is there's a singular focus on the work that has to go into it. Uh, and, and there's no worry about what expectations we have uh, or what people think we're capable of or not capable of. It's solely about every day putting the work in. And I think that's a, a change that was needed uh, to be able to come in and have everybody just focus on getting better every day uh, and not worry about everything that's going on on the outside, not getting involved with everything going on in the media and just focus on playing football and playing it at a high level. Baker Mayfield says he's not talking this year. How long is that going to last, JC? I think Baker's been great this offseason. Uh, I think he's been a, a true leader of the team. He's been great during the virtual program. Uh, and again, you just see him continue to take steps uh, to establish himself as you know the face of a franchise and a, and a leader in the locker room. Uh, and he's, he's been the leader since he got here. Uh, and, and he continues to uh, mature and, and you know, take that role uh, and move forward with it. Uh, but he's been great. He's been going into different meetings and, and being involved beyond what, what you'd expect. But do uh, you think that he could actually be quiet? Uh, I mean, he has so far. Uh, yeah, but he, he hadn't had, played yet. He hadn't been criticized for anything yet. 
that, that, that's true. I mean, I think he's, I, I think there are, there are some people that continue to <laughs> criticize him even when nothing's going on. Oh, that's on. true. That's true. But those <laughs> so are, those... I think he's been criticized, <laughs> but I, I think he, uh, I'll, I'll believe him. I, you know, I, I trust, you know, his perspective at this point of just want to go out there and prove it on the field. And I think whenever Baker gets that chip on his shoulder, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah. Did you ever just say, shut up, Baker? <laughs> well, Baker's one of those guys. He's a chippy guy where, you know, we go after each other all the time, just in fun. Um, but you know, he, he's one of the best guys in the locker room where, where he likes giving it, but also he can, he can take some criticism and take some shots and not take it personal. So he, he's been, he's been fun to mess around with. Uh, McLovin, do you want to place a bet Cornell? Versus Dartmouth, November 14th. Uh, mm. You want to put some something on the line here? Well, I'm assuming Dartmouth will ar- already have wrapped up the Ivy League title wow. by then. They might sit wow. some guys. Wow. I don't know. I mean, Cornell lost. Do they really need their first team against Cornell? I don't. <laughs> JC, respond. I mean, I, I'm willing to, you, you threw out the wager. I'm, I'm willing to listen. Nick- I, uh, I've been in more con- contact with, with my guys back at Cornell recently, and uh, I'm excited to see what they do. How about, um, let me see. How about he has to wear a big green uh, Dartmouth jersey in a post game of whatever week that is, like week 10. He has to wear a Dartmouth t-shirt in the locker room for Ooh. the post game interviews. Okay. And I will wear a Cornell helmet. helmet on the show. So he'll wear a Dartmouth uh, or a Cornell helmet for three hours on the show, JC. You have I to think wear, that sounds fair. You have to wear a Dartmouth jersey the entire week. And you have to bring up Dart- <laughs> Dartmouth that entire following week. You always have to make a mention of Dartmouth, Dartmouth football. Jay Fiedler, Buddy Tevens, all those names. Is that, is that, is that fair enough? I have, to, I have to wear this shirt for the entire week? Yes. I, I, think, that's, I think that's a little, uh, a little too much. I will, um, I will wear it for one day, your choice, whether it's Sunday after the game or, or any day uh, throughout the week. Uh, in any media that week, I will always give a reference to Dartmouth. Uh, JC, or Dartmouth. okay. Yes, JC, yes don't, McLovin. Don't negotiate with me. I'm not the NFL. I'm not going <laughs> to roll over here. I know your tricks. <laughs> this is great practice. This is great practice. <laughs> all right, I think we got it. I think we got the, the battle lines have been drawn here. Now, all of a sudden, I care about Dartmouth and Cornell. Uh, JC, good luck in the offseason uh, with everything you're uh, navigating through. We appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. That's uh, JC Treader.